I'm Paul Robbins. I'm the director of the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And my thinking on ethics in the Anthropocene are driven by the fact that traditional North American environmental ethics are predicated on an assumption that if you just took people's hand off the earth and got them out of the way, you'd get good things back. you get nature back. And both the, the physical conditions of the Earth system, as well as the scale of human activity, make that assumption a really bad one. That is to say, if you take your hand back off the Earth, you're still going to see change. Change is built into the system. The Earth has got an ongoing, unidirectional, and surprising set of transformations in front of it. And there's, there's a lot we can do about it, but we can't go back. So what should we be thinking about? I think. There is a good side to this. I mean, there's a lot of downsides to this. You've got two degrees of warming built into the system. I don't even know what the world would look like at four degrees. It could be a nightmare for a lot of people, especially the terrifically disempowered people in the world. On the other hand, if we assume that our hands are on the earth and that we are gardeners of what Emma Maris calls a, a rambunctious garden, something we can't fully control but that we can craft, we can begin to think about the ecosystems around us as something we're entangled with, that we are responsible for, and the ways in which we're responsible to one another. This means all kinds of alternative economies are possible that think about ecosystems. When you think about food movements, that's sort of what they're really about at bottom, um, although they can be highly problematic. Uh, they're still about a kind of uh, ethics of care. And that gives you all kinds of options. There's a lot of options on the table about responding to and crafting the earth. So an ethics, an environmental ethics for the Anthropocene has to, one, be based on the assumption that there's no going back, which is, that's head spinning, and two, that these are all entangled with human needs, aspirations, and politics, because it, as if human beings are the major actor in the global climate system, ethics has to be a human ethic.